right, we're here at my Urban Worm Bag. And the last time we were in here, we put just a whole lot of bedding. So as we go through here, I'm seeing that it's really dry and we put it in dry. So one of the things that I did was I added some ice cubes, some actual ice balls. They come out of my freezer, they're pretty cool. <laughs> they're pretty big too. So anyway, I added those on here to try and moisten it up. And one of the things I found is that it probably moistened the area right there, but then it also dripped down. So this little contraption that is at the bottom of the urban worm bag was filled with just a little bit of water in here. So what I did was I took it out and I dried it out and I ended up just putting this big bowl in here and it got a couple more drips, that was it, but I decided to stop using the ice. So what I'm gonna use this time is I'm gonna use some damp shredded cardboard and this is my only bin that's kind of like this. I have three other bins and you know, it's a different bin, so I'm gonna try different things. But one of the things we did was we put in a giant mango in here. We also put some pumpkin chunks and right away sitting on top, I see a really big fat red wiggler. And I think here's another one right here. I love catching them in the act. Let's just get that right there for you. So yeah. So they are definitely enjoying themselves in here. Let's get a bigger dig in here and see what we're at with them. Oh, I'm starting to feel some good juicy stuff. Whoa, check it out. Check out those worms and check out that mango. So it looks like they've got to some of it, but they haven't eaten at all. So I have to keep that in mind as I decide how much to feed in here. And let me just dig a little bit deeper. Now, I am not planning on digging throughout my urban worm bag as it grows and gets bigger. I'm just gonna be able to get in the first couple inches and <laughs> this is great. Look at that, I see worms all over the place. Even though this is new bedding, we're able to see the worms pretty well here. So anyway, let's go ahead and keep digging. But yeah, this is kind of a special circumstances since this bin is brand new that I'm gonna dig around a little bit, just kind of see how it's doing. But normally I would not dig this much in this urban worm bag. And here is our temperature sensor. So let's go ahead and review the min and max temperatures that we had in here. And now you can see why I have a bag around it, because I knew the worms would be all in it. What I did was I put this right next to the feeding. So when the food went in, it was just a little bit cold. In fact, it had come out of the freezer maybe 20 minutes prior. So when we first put this in, the min temperature I got, I think was 36 degrees, which is about one degree Celsius. And the temperature decreased throughout the night down to that temperature. And then the next day it increased. And throughout the week, it's been 11 days since we fed it. So throughout that about a week and a half, the max temperature was 86.2 degrees, which is 30.1 degrees Celsius. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and then we're gonna put it right back in when we feed. So I'm just gonna mix it around and try and mix some of this drier cardboard with some of the wetter stuff. And I think the solution that I've come up with this bin is I'm gonna have to add wet bedding or moist bedding for the foreseeable future until I get to the point where this bin is filled maybe up to another few inches. And that's because the surface area of all this area right here is much larger compared to the volume compared to all my other bins. So. This is vermicompost learn by doing, and I'm definitely learning how to manage a different bin. And I don't know if you can see them, but like right there, we've got some great worms all throughout. The other thing is I don't have that many worms in here compared to my other bins. This bin only has about 1,500. So something like this mango that would be down to the mango skeleton or seed is still going after 11 days. So I'm gonna think about that when I add our feeding. So let's go ahead and get that started. So first thing I'm gonna do is add some wetted bedding and you can see, can't even get one drop, but it is definitely moist compared to this drier bedding over here. So I'll just start with that. And then I'm gonna add the food and this is what we had in mind here. We've got a lot of lettuces and some lettuce stalks and we've got a banana peel. So let's go ahead and dump that in. And because they also have that mango right there, I think this will probably be a good enough feeding for them. I'm gonna try and get back in about a week. But one of the things I did wanna add is I wanted to add this paper towel here and some of this pumpkin. And this pumpkin should help to wet the bin a little bit or certainly this area right here. And I don't think this feeding is gonna heat up as much as that other feeding did, but we're gonna put the sensor right there to see. All right, so there we go. We'll put our sensor right there. 
Before we add our amendments, I'm going to put just a little bit of this cardboard down so that we've got something to put our amendments on besides that sensor. So first thing we'll do is we'll go in with some of my worm chow, just some expired grains and graham crackers, that kind of thing for my pantry. And I think I'll just spread it all throughout. I'm almost to the bottom of the barrel here, so might as well put it all in. And then we're going to add some ground coffee and tea leaves. And it's just another food source for them. And this is all spent. This isn't brand new coffee or anything like that. It's just from our morning coffee. And then finally, I'm going to add our grit, which for us is eggshells. I just put them in my magic bullet blender and grind them up after I've washed them just by rinsing them out and then letting them dry and then kind of crushing them and throwing them in there. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to bury it with more of our wetted down bedding. Now, what I use for bedding is shredded cardboard and some pieces of shredded newspaper. You can see something like that. It's probably a piece of shredded newspaper. And I just use my 12 sheet cross cut micro shredder. The micro is what gives it to the very, very small pieces like that. And the fact that it can shred 12 sheets of paper to me means that it can get the cardboard. I've got a video where I show you 12 sheets of paper going in and the shredder actually struggles a little bit. And then I put a piece of cardboard in and it just slices through it like butter. So that shredder I have is four years old and I've been doing cardboard in it for two years and it has not missed a beat. So go ahead and check out my Amazon affiliate links if you want to check it out and see the prices for it, that kind of thing. But they've got a couple newer models, so they're going to be just as good or better than the one I have. All right, so real quick, something I wanted to talk about. That last feeding had heated up. I don't know if this one is going to, but I have that sensor in there to tell me. But you can also put just a frozen water bottle in here. And that way, if the moisture is the level that you want or you don't want water to drip all the way through your bin, you just put a frozen water bottle on top and that'll keep the temperature down. More of a tip for the summer, but I am here in Florida and the sun actually hits this area for a few hours a day and I put a tarp on to kind of reflect the sun. But I know that I've got a frozen water bottle if I need it. So I've been running this for 19 days and I've already learned a lot. So I know from now on, or for the foreseeable future, I'm going to put just kind of moist bedding in here to try and keep the overall moisture on the top a little bit more moist than I'm seeing it. Certainly down underneath, it was good enough and the worms liked it. And I have no clue if the worms are way, way, way down there eating up some of the initial stuff that we put on there. But it's a new bin, so I'm learning a lot. And if you have any suggestions or anything that you saw, especially in your first days leading up to, you know, like three or four months or six months in, let me know what I can look forward to in this bin because I am really excited. This has really been fun. So I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing really well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.